Hello friends, welcome back to another awesome day, day 64 of the 100 days of hell with Python algo trading. Today, we will be understanding that how the linear regression class of the sklearn calculate the m and b, the slope and the intercept. And we will also learn about the various metrics of the regression. So in previous session, we have learned that we can calculate the m which is slope with this formula and then to calculate the b which is intercept with this formula, right? And we also know that the sklearn also uses the exact formula to calculate the m and b in the linear regression class. So let me show you that I have a code. So in this what we did, first we download the data from the Yahoo Finance and then we apply the formula, this formula, exactly this. So first of all what we do, we download the data from the Yahoo Finance and then we apply this exact formula uh, here to calculate the m. So you can see here, first we calculate the mean of both x and y and then we calculate the numerator and denominator right you can see here and then this is the value of m right which is manually uh, numerator upon denominator and to calculate the b we are using the formula y minus uh, mx which is this one right okay then what we did we use the linear regression class and with the help of that also we try to find the m and b so here you can see that we are printing the value of m and b manually and this is the value of coefficient and the intercept so this is exactly same you can see here and which explains that it uses the same formula but we know that we cannot use it always uh, for the higher dimensions we need to use some different kind of algorithms like gradient descent now let's understand some metrics which are really important for us so first of all we will start with the mae mean absolute error so the first one is mean absolute error okay previously we have learned that we apply regression when we have two values one is independent variable and another is dependent variable input and output for now just suppose that you have only one value that is output right and you draw that on a chart so randomly i am plotting that on a chart so these values are like this. Okay, now if I do not have any input, then what I do to calculate the predictions. For example, these values are uh, 40, uh, 50, uh, 30, 40, and let's say this is 60. Just a random number. So what I will do, I'll just find the average of those values, the mean of those values, right? So for that, I will draw a line like this. So this is the worst possible case right when we have only the output and to find any prediction we just find the average of that value right so uh, it would be around uh, let's calculate this so 40 plus 40 80 then 110 160 and 220 so 220 over 5 which is 44 but now when we applying the simple linear regression and when we have two variables uh, we also have an input then that time what we do we draw a regression line so let's say this is this one right and now we have to find this distance right this is the actual value and this is the predicted value right so we will find these distances these one so in mean absolute error we compare this model to this model the formula for mean absolute error is 1 by n summation of i equals to 1 to n and mode of yi minus yi hat and yi is these actual values and yi hat is the uh, predicted value from the regression analysis right here what it measures mae measures the average magnitude of errors in a set of predictions without considering their directions right the values can be above the line or below the line so it will ignore those uh, directions now it gives an idea of how much the predictions differ from the actual value on average so we know that the actual values are here on this the average value when we have only one output right only one variable so it will compare the regression model with the average value model right so here let's say it was 44 and when we calculate this one it will be definitely less so we always want to minimize this value right it should be the minimum value for a better model. Now, interpretation. So a lower MAE indicates better model performance 
as it suggests that the predictions are closer to the actual values. Now, what are the advantages of this? It is simple to understand and interpret. Yeah, it is not sensitive to outliers as it treats all errors equally by averaging their absolute values. So we know that if there is any outlier, it is not so sensitive to that outlier, right? It will treat them equally and it can handle the outliers. Now, disadvantage of this, it doesn't provide information about the variance or distribution of errors and larger errors can be masked by averaging. So even if they are outliers, we'll be not be able to identify them uh, like very clearly and it will be averaged out, right? When we take the average, it will be disappeared. So it is the disadvantage of that. Now, next metrics is mean squared error. So the only difference here is that it is taking the square of the error site right? in the MAE we were going for the mode but here we are going for the square and it has its own benefits and uh, disadvantage so let's understand them so like MAE MSE compares the actual value to the predicted values but it squares the errors before averaging them so before averaging them it will square the values and by doing that what will happen it will penalize large errors more than MAE let's say there was an outlier right and if you square it, then what will happen? It will go further away. So it will penalize all the outliers. Then it is often used in optimization algorithms as it has a smoother gradient aiding in convergence. So we know that the graph of uh, MAE is something like this, but the graph of MSE looks something like this. So it is easier in calculations because we'll be able to take the derivatives of this and that's why it will be easier. Now the disadvantage. It is very sensitive to outliers, which can lead to a misleadingly high MSC if the dataset contains anomalies. So definitely it is sensitive as we have discussed that it will square the values and because of that, sometime it might exaggerate the outliers. So this is the mean squared error. And now we have root mean squared error. That is simply will take the square root of this MSC, not uh, much difference. In MAE, what happens? the value which will come out it will be in the same unit as the data but in this it will be squared this is the formula for uh, root mean squared error it is the square root of MSE it brings the error metric back to the same units as the original data making it more interpretable so it will also give the values in the same unit as the data then what it measures uh, it measures the standard deviation of the residuals which we have seen that these are the uh, errors then it provides an estimate of the magnitude of errors and is more interpretable than MSE because it is in the same unit. Okay, now the interpretation. A lower RMSE indicates a model with predictions that are on average closer to the actual values, right? If the RMSE is lower, then we can interpret that the, the values are closer to the actual values. Then we know that the RMSE is in the same units with the data. It can be directly compared to the data's range to the assist model performance right so it is easier to interpret okay now the advantages it is more interpretable definitely it will still penalize the larger errors more than the mae because it also squared the first and then it takes the square root definitely it will also uh, penalize the larger errors now the disadvantage like mse rmse sensitive to outliers which can significantly inflate the metric so we have to keep that in mind for sure Okay, let's move to the next metric, which is R squared or coefficient of determination. Okay, so the formula for R squared is one minus y i minus y i hat squared over y i minus y mean squared, right? Y bar is the mean of the actual values and R squared compares the residual sum of squares to the total sum of squares, right? Okay, now let's understand that what it measures. So R square indicates the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is predictable from the independent variable, right? We know that the output is known as the dependent variable and the input is known as the independent variable, right? Now, it ranges from 0 to 1, where 1 indicates perfect prediction and 0 indicates that the model explains none of the variance, right? It ranges from the 0 to 1. If the value is 1 or closer to 1, then we can say that the model is good. And if it is zero, then we can say that it doesn't explain anything, right? In interpretation, an R2 of 0 0.8, for example, suggests that 80% of the variance 
in the dependent variable is explained by the model. So if let's say R2 value is 0 0.8, then we can say that 80% of variance is explained by the model and the rest 20% is unexplained, right? And uh, that cannot be explained mathematically, we can say. Higher R square values indicates a better fit of the model of the data, right? So higher the value, higher the better fit. Advantages, it provides a quick overview of how well the model explains the data variability and it's also very easy to interpret. And when we talk about the disadvantage, we can say R square can be misleading in some context, especially in non-linear models, right? So in non-linear, it is not that useful. Adding more variables to the model always increase R square, even if those variables are irrelevant. So if we add some variables and even those variables are irrelevant, still the value of R square might be increased. So that is the disadvantage. So these were some basic metrics and this is it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye. Take care. Have a nice day.